So this is um, Even When It Hurts by Hillsong United. I encourage you to not look at me and just to enjoy the song as it is and close your eyes and listen.
my time on earth is done louder than I'll sing your praise I will only sing your praise Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is Pentecost Sunday and the flowers on the altar have been placed in, there in memory of Margaret Sullivan by the Cairns family. If you're a guest or visitor with us today, we want to welcome you and encourage you to go to our website, eccatterboro.org. If you would like to fill out an online connection card, this gives you the opportunity to stay connected with us through monthly email newsletters, um, as well as our weekly email connections, you can participate in either of those two things. Special thanks to everyone who helped with our family cafe this past Wednesday. It really helped to serve our community in a profound way. And also special thanks to everyone who participated in our uh, graduation baccalaureate service, which was conducted virtually yesterday at 4 o'clock, and we give thanks for all the students moving up from elementary school to middle school, middle school to high school, high school graduations, and college and university graduations as well. It was a joy to celebrate with you and your families. Psalm 121.1 says, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. May we now enter into a time of worship through our opening hymn, number 514 in your blue hymnals, if you have them at home. Come, Spirit, come.
Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God who delights to show us mercy. We gratefully come before you as we bow our heads and open our hearts to you in prayer. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so our hearts may overflow with your message of love. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son Jesus to walk among us and sacrifice his life to rescue us from sin and shame and sorrow and to give us hope. Help us to actively choose what is good in your eyes every day. Lord, we know that you can do impossible things. We know that you are with us and for us and in us for our good. So we pray for healing, Lord. We pray for protection and provision for everyone near and far. Almighty God, you know every one of us by name. You know our thoughts and our needs. With this global pandemic affecting millions of people and taking the lives of hundreds of thousands of your children, Lord, we pray for an end. We pray for a solution. We pray that your healing hand come quickly, especially to those currently suffering. Abba, Father, we pray for those who have passed away during this time. Lord, we know that they are at rest in you. We pray for their families who may not be experiencing closure during this pandemic. We lift them up to you, Lord, and ask that you please wrap your loving arms around them so they may find peace and comfort during their grief. We know, Lord, that not even death can separate us from your love. We pray for all the medical staff and frontline personnel who put others' lives ahead of their own. Lord, protect them and their families as they remain faithful and protected in your mighty name. Lord, fill the whole earth with the knowledge of your glory. We pray for the leaders of all of the nations. Let them know your presence and goodness and help them work together for the betterment of this world. In our community, we pray for those who are sick and going through treatment at this time. We lift them up to you, Lord, and ask that they find in you refuge and rest. We pray for those suffering with any illness, mental and physical. Lord, we, we have faith that you are the rescuer for all of our pains. You have the ability to heal us from the inside out. We fall at your feet, Lord, and we give our suffering to you. Take it captive and heal us, Lord. Lord, help us to help one another. Teach us how to be instruments of peace and compassion, especially to those who are suffering. Teach us how to speak your truth and be examples to others by being kind and patient and loving to all, just as Jesus was so compassionate for the sick, outcast, and vulnerable. Let us walk in his footsteps looking for every opportunity to lift someone up, to comfort them, to bring them joy in their sorrow, and despair when there's hope. Your hope, Lord, that only you can provide, which turns to everlasting peace. Father, we pray for justice in this world. We pray for the people of color who are not only disproportionately affected by COVID-19, but who are losing their lives solely based on systemic fear and the color of their skin. Lord, we need your healing. Show us how to love as you loved, showing no judgment to others, but only compassion. Help us to stand together, your body, to stand against racial inequality and intolerance. Help us speak truth, love, and humbly walk in your son's footsteps for compassion to others. We can no longer accept apathy as our stance. We need to come together and move towards solidarity in your glorious loving name. Join with me now as we remember the prayer the Lord taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our children's moment. We have some special guests with us today. The helmets are here. And uh, this is the mark of a beginning where different families uh, will have an opportunity to bring their children in for the children's moment. And we're going to start what's called the surprise bag for the summer worship services starting next Sunday. We shift to 9.30 in the morning uh, for worship, and we're going to have our children's message to be based on the surprise bag. Do you guys remember what the surprise bag is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the surprise bag is what? It's where the one kid gets to pick an item to put in the surprise bag, and one of the pastors has to come up with a lesson based on the item that they brought in. But the pastor doesn't know what's in the bag, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to actually give you the bag, but this was the original surprise bag from the first year we did this, a few summers ago. Um, but we're going to have kids bring in their item in their own bag just to keep everything uh, germ-free and so forth during this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but also, we are going to have different families each week. And if you're interested in having your kids participate in the recordings, then you can just let us know by sending an email or giving me a call or however you want to do it. And we'll pick a date that works for you and your family. The way this is going to work is Gretchen's actually going to be our first surprise bag person because we're going to be talking to Bruce today about our children's moment, which isn't a surprise, but it, there is an object involved that's underneath there. Um, and I'll tell you more about that as we continue. But today is Pentecost Sunday, and on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate uh, something significant. Do you know who comes on Pentecost Sunday? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So it wasn't Jesus' birth, but it was the coming of the Holy Spirit. Um, Bruce, you had a birthday recently, right? And what what happened on your birthday? I, since we are social distancing, you didn't really get a chance to hang out with your friends, right? Uh, I had a parade, and a bunch of people joined and kind of waved and just said hello. <laughs> so you had a birthday parade. And who started off the birthday parade? A fire hydrant and an ambulance. So the ambulance and fire truck led the parade with their siren going. And, and how many cars do you think followed afterwards? Uh, <laughs> a lot. A lot, right? And who came? Do you remember some of the people? A lot of my friends. Me. <laughs> a lot of some people from the church. Yeah, so church people came and your family and friends. And did you eat cake later? Yes. Yes, so you still got your cake even though everybody couldn't eat it with you. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Good. I actually have a birthday cake today. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. can, can you see what that says? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Do you see it? It's upside down, so that's no, why I can't. Gretchen? No. Huh? It begins with a C. It begins with a C. What's the next one? H. H. U. U. R. R. Church. Church. <laughs> Happy birthday, church. Why would it say happy birthday, church? Hmm. What was the last holiday we celebrated? The last holiday? Easter? Easter, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when Jesus raised from the grave. Mm -hmm. And do you know how many days he walked on earth after he raised from the grave? There were 40 days. He walked on earth for 40 days and then... Pentecost, the word Pentecost actually means 50. And that's when the Holy Spirit came. So Jesus, when he was raised from the grave and right before he ascended up into heaven, said, stay here because God's promise will be fulfilled. 
And the promise that God made, that Jesus made to his disciples, is after he raised up to heaven, that he would send down the Holy Spirit. And he sent down the Holy Spirit, not just to his disciples, but to all believers, then and now. And so we look at Pentecost, as the birthday of the church. So today we're celebrating with the cake, and the helmets are going to have a cake today, because the church was born on Pentecost. And we're actually doing a whole sermon series this summer on the book of Acts that tells the story of how the church emerged out of this special day. So a lot of times we don't make too big a deal out of Pentecost. We make a big deal out of Christmas when Jesus was born. We make a big deal out of Easter when he was raised from the grave. But sometimes we should pay closer attention to the fact that the Holy Spirit came on this very special day. And on this special day, the church was born. Isn't that good news? Awesome. So Gretchen, you're going to bring us a prize for me next week? Do you know what it is yet? No? So you're not going to give me any clues, huh? Good. Well, just bring up, next week we'll do this again, and you'll bring something in, and we'll do the surprise bag for the first time next Sunday. And I'm looking forward to that. Don't be too hard on me. <laughs> Can we pray together? Okay. God, I thank you for all the children of our church. Thank you for our summer worship services and the fun that we have with the surprise bag each summer. God bless us this summer as we uh, do this together in a new way, uh, but help us to continue to find ways to worship you fully and to celebrate the fact that the church was born today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Colossians 3, 16 through 17, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. For our offering today, we simply want to remind you that our offerings can be made on our website, eccatterboro.org, or uh, this can be one-time gifts or regular gifts. You just hit the word give once you get to the website and it takes you to the uh, giving platform. You can also mail in your offerings to P.O. Box 208, Atterboro, Massachusetts. And if you belong to another church and are just visiting us today, we just strongly encourage you to continue to support your local churches. All of our churches need support to thrive in good times and also to survive in difficult times. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, our God, we rejoice in your glory. We give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the birth of the church. We give thanks for your place in our lives and for the generosity you have had toward us. God, help us to respond to your generosity with our own. Help us to live out our lives fully in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Help us to let the Holy Spirit guide us into the purposes and the pathways that you have in mind for us. God, help us to be the people and the church you want us to be, empowered by the Holy Spirit and witnesses to the ends of the earth. May we use these gifts in accordance with those purposes. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading for today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And in this reading, we hear the story about the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of, as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these speak who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thankful that Christina Ferry could be uh, here with us in worship today. Christina is a seminary student at North Park Theological Seminary, and she finished serving an internship with us for a year uh, a few months ago, and uh, she's filling in a bit while Pastor Chris is on paternity leave as we continue to celebrate the birth of their son, Samuel. Uh, it's been a joy, and I'm grateful to have Christina share in worship leadership today. Several years ago, we did a Bible study with people from across the street at a Gudasagim temple. Rabbi Elise uh, and I came up with an idea to do a study that compared the Jewish calendar or year to the church calendar or a year, and we called it Sacred Seasons and Holy Scriptures. Passover is a Jewish festival most of us are aware of as Christians in large part because of how much attention was paid to it by Jesus in his last days. The Passover feast was the context in which the Last Supper took place and the bread became the symbol of his body. Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross is often compared to the sacrificial lamb of the Passover. John the Baptist famously said, that Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Passover is the festival where the Jews celebrate the fact that the homes of Jewish families were passed over because of the blood of the Lamb that was spread upon their doorposts while living in Egypt. The Passover festival is a time when the Jewish people celebrate their freedom, God's deliverance, and God's protection. And so Jews from all over the dispersed region where they now lived would come back to Jerusalem on a pilgrimage each year during the Passover festival. But there were actually three festivals that Jewish people would make this kind of pilgrimage for. The first being Passover, the second being Pentecost, which is Greek for Shavuot. Uh, that's the Hebrew word. The one holy day we share in common in our current church calendar with the Jewish year is Pentecost. And this is something I discovered while we were doing this study. Now, the word Pentecost means 50. And Pentecost takes place 50 days after the Passover festival. Remember, Jesus was 
resurrected a few days after the Passover and then spent 40 days walking on earth and revealing himself alive in the resurrected state to his disciples, scars and all. Then the time of his ascension took place and Jesus encouraged his disciples to stay in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit, which took place on Pentecost, an already established holy day. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. You see, Pentecost already existed, and they gathered together for this feast, and then the Holy Spirit came. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, be present with us in our search for truth and understanding, faith and faithfulness. Bless the meditations of my heart and the hearing of these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One way to look at Pentecost, as I stated in the children's message, is the birthday of the church. (coughs) In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, before Jesus ascended, he said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see, it was upon the pillars of the power that came from the Holy Spirit and the purpose that was established for us by Jesus that the church was built upon. In Acts chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Suddenly from heaven came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages as the Spirit gave them ability. As the Spirit gave them ability. You see, this was a dramatic moment, and it is often referred to as the birthday of the church because this is what Pentecost is for Christians. It is the celebration of the birth of the church. I'm going to make another jump way back here in the Bible and and the history of the people of God. I want to jump way back to the book of Genesis chapter 11 and the story of the Tower of Babel. It is a story about God introducing the diversity of languages to our planet to humble people who he had created. Basically, it tells about how human beings started thinking too highly of themselves after the establishment of a new technology known as the brick. And they used these bricks to build a giant tower. So God throws them a curveball by making us have all different languages. In Genesis 11.1, it says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And then they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower with its top into the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Please note that they were concerned with making a name for themselves, not for glorifying the name of God. And they built the city for themselves, not with other people in mind. In verse 5, it says, The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. 
So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. It's easy to see why some people would argue that the scattering of the people and the diversification of languages was a punishment or a curse. And some people see Pentecost as a reversing of that curse. You know, the people were starting to think too highly of themselves and not depending on God enough. So some people think that God did this thing which brought human beings down a few notches as a punishment. But another way to look at this is to see what God did as a gift. He gave the gift of these diverse languages to our world so that we would be humbled. And the challenge of the many languages and the diversification of these people groups and cultures has kept us all humble throughout the ages, even though some of us have not heeded the lessons that were intended. We have been forced to learn each other's languages and to respect each other's cultures in the midst of our diversity. And even as transportation and communication feels like it has shrunk our world, we still live in the midst of these challenges. We have been forced to learn each other's languages and to respect each other's cultures. I've been thinking a lot lately about how the advances in transportation and communication has spread in, in our world. Lots of people travel today from U.S. to China and China to Europe and Europe to India and India to the U.S. and Europe to the U.S. and so on and so forth. And so in the midst of all this travel, we can't help but be humbled by the fact that this coronavirus spread so rapidly across the world that it became a reality for just about everybody on the planet. So some people look at the gift of the Holy Spirit as a reverse of the curse of the Tower of Babel. And that is what people speaking in all these different languages is all about on Pentecost in their mind. But again, I do not see the humbling of the people of, at the Tower of Babel as a curse as much as I see it as a gift. And when Pentecost came, people did not all of a sudden have one language. They started speaking in each other's languages. By the way of the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in languages that other people could understand. And what this reveals is how unifying the work of the Holy Spirit truly is and how in the end we are one body with one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope of our calling, with one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. You can't miss the word one in the midst of that text from Ephesians. It does not matter what language you speak, what land you come from, what color your skin is. We are all one body with one spirit, one God and Father who is above all and in all and through all. This is why my heart has been crushed lately by the visibility of the systemic racism that continues to plague our nation, and the church. The truth is there should be no room for racism within Christianity. And white Christians obviously need to find better ways to confront the spirit of race supremacy that has plagued our nation's history. And it's plaguing our current reality. You know, I used to see racism as a scar on the face of American history with slavery and the history of lynching that came afterwards. 
as the centerpiece of this scar. But our racism right now feels more like an open wound than a scar to me. And it's time for us to confront it in ourselves, in our church, in our history, and in our current realities. What does all this have to do with Pentecost? It has to do with the fact that they spoke in languages that other people could understand. What this means is that the Holy Spirit is equipping his body to be united with each other in a world that needs to see the light of the Christ and the light of Christ in the midst of our darkness. The big difference between the Jewish understanding of Pentecost and the Christian understanding of Pentecost is that the Jews celebrate God's giving of the Torah, the law, which gave shape to their identity in the wilderness before they entered the promised land. Christians celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, which has given identity to the church as it emerged in the midst of our world after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Another name that Jews have for Pentecost or Shavuot is the Day of Matan, And matan is a Hebrew word that refers to a gift given to a bride between the time when the couple is engaged and when the bridegroom arrives for the actual wedding. Wedding festivals were week-long celebrations hosted by the family of the bride, and the groom was never there at the beginning of the celebration. The wedding ceremony would take place when the groom arrived in the middle of the festivities. So the matan was a gift that was intended to be a source of encouragement for the bride from her fiancé to allow her to have assurance at the beginning of the festivities that he would eventually arrive. In some ways, I'm sure the bride found it hard to celebrate at the beginning of the week until the groom would arrive for the wedding ceremony. But the matan or the gift that came before his arrival was intended to help with this process and to keep anxiety at bay. This is in some ways what the Holy Spirit is all about for us as Christians. It's a matan to those of us who are Christ followers and waiting for the day of Jesus Christ when he will return and usher in a new heaven and a new earth. It is a gift given in the space between when Jesus was raised and when he will return. You see, the third festival, when Jewish people would make a pilgrimage to Israel, is called Sukkot. And on this festival of the tabernacle, this is intended to help Jewish people to celebrate the movement from the wilderness into the promised land. It is a common practice for Jewish people to build shacks or temporary housing to symbolize the nomadic period of life that their people spent in the wilderness. When the Hebrew people lived in this space in between the emancipation from slavery in Egypt and the deliverance into the promised land. But to be clear, the reason this nomadic period is remembered is primarily to celebrate the joy of being delivered into the promised land and living in a land that was filled with milk and honey. They remembered their past to honor the promise and the present. So for Jews, Pentecost was a celebration of the giving of the law, the Torah, in the midst of the wilderness on Mount Sinai long before being delivered into the promised land. It was their matan. It was seen as a gift that gave them identity. So it was in this context of this already established Holy Day that the Holy Spirit that was given to us as a matan on the birthday of the church 
Once again, it says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and, and, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So this was a very unifying moment for the church. Lots of people came to believe in Jesus on that day. This had to do with everyone hearing the good news in their own languages. In verse 5 it says, Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound the crowd gathered and were bewildered because each one of them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? You see, God did not get rid of languages and diversity when the Holy Spirit came. He actually honored the different languages and the diversity that existed in our land. In verse 11, they said, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And then in verse 12, it says, all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. Those who did not understand tried to blame it on alcohol. But the truth is, is that drunk people have a difficult time speaking their own language, let alone someone else's. So people were truly perplexed about what all this meant. But what it meant was that all things are possible with God. He once scattered the languages to keep us humble, but he was now able to equip his saints to speak the good news in other people's languages so that he could bring it to them. You see, he did not do this to make these people look good, but to unite his church and to elevate his glory through the words that they spoke. You see, the name that is above every name is the name of Jesus. And the church was born to fill the space between the ascension and the return of Jesus. You see, in Revelation 7, 9 through 10, John had a vision, and it says, After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne, before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. You see, we exist in this space between the resurrection and the return. And it's similar to the space that existed between the wilderness or between the emancipation from slavery and the deliverance into the promised land. It's similar to the space between Good Friday and Easter. But this space between the ascension and the return, or the resurrection and the return, is the age of the church, where we are charged to fulfill the mission of proclaiming the gospel to all people everywhere, to the ends of the earth, you see, the good news of the gospel is not just good news for Americans. And it's certainly not intended to be just good news for white Americans. No, the good news is for all people everywhere. And until the church realizes this and opens its heart up way wider than it's been opened, we're going to remain in trouble because we're failing to embrace the humility, the gift that God offered to us when he introduced diversity. You see, it's not about us. It's about God. It's about the Holy Spirit. 
It's about this matan that we need to open up our hearts to. It's about the Holy Spirit living in us. It's about the Holy Spirit bringing us to places we can't even imagine. It's about a gift. It's about our identity. It's about who we are. And it's about how God wants us to be. We got a lot of room to grow. And we also have a lot of room to let people know who Jesus truly is and how much he can change our world. The Holy Spirit unites us. Let's put away anything that divides us. Amen. As we sing our closing songs of praise today, I hope we'll sing them as a prayer. And the first song we're going to sing is, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. May we sing it in faith. May we sing it in unity. And may we sing it with hope. Amen.
become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us
Now hear the benediction. Go out today in the power of the Holy Spirit. Proclaim the gospel where you live and work. Serve the Lord with gladness, with deeds that speak the language of love and mercy. We are sent in the power of the Lord to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. May the Lord God who raised Jesus from the dead bless you. May the God to whom our Lord ascended make his face to shine upon you. And may the Spirit, who is the unity of love between Father and Son, grant you peace and complete unity in his body now and forevermore. Amen.